Yo, what's up, people? Back with my guy, Nick. Nick, how are we feeling tonight? Feeling good, man. Excited for the next four days of action. Sick matchups all across the board. As people trickle in, who's here? What up, Bluff City? How are we doing, my guy? Ian, of course, here. We got Nick back in the building. Dean, good chat participant last time. Good to see you. All right, quick story, Nick. I had my men's league basketball game. We're up seven with seven seconds left against a team that is absolutely horrible. Like, it, it shouldn't have been close. And I grab a defensive rebound off an airballed three with one arm, and I grab it. The game's over. We're up seven with seven seconds left. And this kid runs over from the opposite three-point line to come hack me to send me to the line. I'm like, dude. And I gave this kid such an earful. I'm like, are you really hacking me in a regular season men's league game with six seconds left up down seven? I just thought that was so stupid. That really pissed me off. And I just was like, if you ever watched a game of basketball before, like, are you are you serious, dude? The kid didn't understand it, man. You should have told him. You should have told him we got a live stream coming up. Like, got to hit the road, man. Yeah, there's a game after. It's like, come on, dude. Like, yeah. So that pissed me off. All right. Um, numbers are low right now, but we. Al, this guy always asks about Alabama. Nick, there's there's different ways we can go with this. Is there a specific matchup that that jumps out to you? Chat, make some noise if there's a specific game you want to hear about. But Nick, is there any game that's been keeping you up at night or that you want to talk about the most? Um, well, hold on, I'm gonna bump the show on Twitter real quick for us. Sure. Um, now honestly, like they're all eight pretty equal to me. Um, there's nothing I'm like crazy on at this point obviously you know sweet 16 the lines are pretty sharp you know right there's nothing i absolutely love but you know i have pretty strong opinions about all the games and i'm excited to watch all the games i think this is like honestly at least since i've been alive one of the best sweet 16s i mean no no crazy upsets at this point besides i guess maybe nc state which i mean we kind of saw coming already i mean their two wins weren't really like you know the craziest of, of, of things we've seen um so yeah i mean sweet 16 is loaded it should be great all the everyone's talking about all the blowouts which there's been a ton of blowouts the first two rounds but but now we're we're to the nitty-gritty with the best teams in the country so it's gonna be a lot of fun so ian's asking about iowa state marquette we got bama here i kind of want to start with this iowa state illinois game because yeah, that's the best one, in my opinion, for sure. It's probably the best game, right? Number one yeah. offense versus number one defense. And I've just been thinking, mm-hmm. like, schematically about, like, what's the what's the total for this game? Do you know the total off the top of your head? I think it's in the 140s. I okay. think. Like, I'm trying to think about how this ma- what this matchup is going to look like, right? Like, is this going to be a, a slow half-court game? Is this – is because Iowa State kind of likes to run sometimes, but are they going to purposefully not run to be – okay, we got 146. Are they going to purposely yeah. just try to really take the air out of the ball to be annoying to Illinois? And, like, are they going to double every Domask booty ball touch? Like, is Dane Danger going to see the floor at all? Like, there's a lot of interesting pieces about this that, like, I'm trying to figure out about this game, and I'm curious what your initial thoughts are. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we kind of talked about it through text and, like, this is one of the hardest X and O games to really like break down. Um, just, I mean, it's the number one offense in the country is the number one defense. I mean, at this, I mean, at least in my opinion, I mean, besides Houston, like this is the top defense, top offense. Um, and movable force means a movable o- object pretty much. Um, so what gives, I, I think like schematically it's really hard to break down because I think Ty Rogers is just such a mystery in this matchup. And, I was reading a tweet. I don't. I should have. I should have bookmarked and saved this. I should have on the show. But like against elite pressure defense, um, which I haven't seen a ton of this season. But when they have, they've really struggled. And Ty Rogers has not been great in those games. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see what they do. Um, like you could have kind of brought up the booty ball dome mask. I think they're gonna double, but I don't know if that's such a good idea. I mean, I think they have players out of that. I think they can make a lot of plays out of that, and they can really shred Iowa State in that. Um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a really fascinating game. I'm interested to hear your, your opinion on it really before I go any further on it. Yeah, also real quick. <clears throat> this guy's the only one that can't hear us, right? Ian says yes. Um, try turning your volume on. It's usually step one. Step two, make sure your your headphones are working. But um, Okay, 
If they double Domask and repeat, Tyrod just want to eat offensive goals. Okay. From a matchup perspective, Nick, I'm thinking, who are you throwing on Terrence Shannon? Is 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 one thing that comes to mind. Like, I understand Lipsy's a <coughs> a great defender, but and maybe can can bother him. But like Shannon is such a horse, and I understand everyone's like Ch- Terrence Shannon in transition, blah blah. But like, um, I don't know. I'm thinking in the half court. Are you putting Lipsy on Ty Rogers? But then as Dean brings up, is Ty Rod like Ty Rogers is such an interesting piece. Like I'm not he's not apples to apples with what Andre Jackson was with UConn last year. But like the idea of having this just athletic freak. He wasn't the pass. He's not the pass that Andre Jackson is right. But like, is he crash the glass causing problems? To me, I think Coleman Hawkins is the key to this game, right? Like, why do I love? Y'all know how much I love BYU. Nick, you were you were riding some of the BYU hype with me, and like. Their ability to go five out, like I understand they were at home, but like they scored 87 points in Iowa State. And that is completely because of their ability to go. I'm, I'm sharing Ken Palm just so we can look at some of these games. Like, yeah, they hit 13 threes. They took 35, but like going five out allowed them to be so efficient inside the arc, right? And that was like before Foose was a thing and Dale and, and uh, what's his face? Trevin Nell didn't play. And like that game is just so, was so telling to me of like, we know how dominant this Iowa State defense is. It's literally ranked better than Houston's right now, but like, if you're going to beat Iowa State, you need to either make it an absolute gross fest like this game was, right? Like the Kansas State game, or you're going to be able to, to you're going to have to really score the basketball. And, you know, I guess a couple of these games were caught in between. I, I don't put much stake into these because the season just was kind of just getting started. And like this one, I don't think Iowa State was really Iowa State yet. That's when Oklahoma was playing their best and they were fully healthy. Um, that was a crazy game. And Iowa State's resume is extremely impressive, right? Like the, the only games they really lost with like this one where they thought they looked since like mid-January was like this one where they thought they won on a buzzer beater um I mean at Houston like nothing really needs to be said and then this Kansas State game that as I said was just like gross like it was just it was just tough to watch you know they turned it over 14 times but I just think that Illinois I'm I'll just get to the point I'm really leading Illinois here and I've loved Iowa State but the reason I lean Illinois is because one they can just cause so many problems offensively with five out with Coleman Hawkins in the short roll with Terrence Gannon going one-on-one, with Ty Rogers, like it's like just they have a size advantage too. And that's why defensively, while I know how bad Illinois is defensively, like the way Iowa State runs offense, a lot of it's like, can we get two feet in the paint? Can we use our big passing base? Like, you know, just get shots like in like the mid-range-ish area. Like on Haslametrics, it says that Iowa State takes like top 10, like mid-range shots in the country or – Iowa State's top 20 in the country and how many mid-range shots they take. Uh, they take a mid-range shot like 30%. And it's not like a mid-range shot is in like a, you know, like a pull-up jumper-ish from like 15, 18. It's more just like that like 10 to 12 foot range. You know what I'm saying? Just like kind of like push shots. And like, it's just, that's why it's not great. The point is, I think Illinois has the size to make how Iowa State scores. I think they have the size to neutralize what Iowa State wants to do offensively. If that makes sense, like they can put good bodies on, like the Momchiloviches, the and I and I don't know. I trust Iowa State and Otzelberger to like have their guys bring their A game more than I trust Illinois to bring their A game. But I think schematically that everything kind of points to Illinois being able to score more, better than anyone else can score on Iowa State and being able to defend well enough. Yeah, no, I I agree. And like at the end of the day, um, I mean, I, like this season, I, I, this season more than any other season I've ever handicapped and I've ever watched, I've kind of like pivoted from, you know, the better defense would typically win these type of games. Like, you know, the motto, like, you know, like defense wins championships. Um, I get that, but like at the end of the day, Illinois has the best two players on the court. Like TSJ and Domask, in my opinion, it's not even close. Like they're better than anyone else. Is I would three say Coleman that. Hawkins? Yeah, I know. And that's, that's like where it becomes debatable too. And I think like, you know, in ball rotations, I, I trust Gary. Like, I, I really like his game. I've always liked his game from Oregon. Like, he's a great player. I trust him to make the right reads, make threes. I trust Coleman Hawkins enough. Um, my biggest concern was rebounding with, like, Robert Jones, Trey King, uh, Milan. But then, like, I looked at the rebounding numbers. And, like, they have really good rebounding numbers. So, like, I do trust him in that department. Um like at the end of the day, you know, like shot volume wise, like Iowa State kind of has an edge with just the turnovers. But like when you look at pull pull up Iowa State's rebounding numbers, like the, their rebounding numbers is not that great. You know, I was it was pretty surprised at me. Um, yeah, yeah, like they're very they're very bang buck average on defensive rebounding, and that's that's like where the shot volume gap is because 
like that's like you just saw, Illinois does not first force turn turnovers. It's complete opposite of I would say who does force uh, high rate turnovers. Um, Wait, on that turnover point, Nick, can I just hop in on mm-hmm. like Illinois? So what I would say is so good defensively. Part of the reason they're so good defensively is why it's because they make you uncomfortable and they force turnovers, yeah. right? And like you look at a defense like Creighton that's trying to force tough shots. I would say it's more just trying to like swarm the ball. And like it's Illinois, I feel like it's like perfectly countered to to capitalize on that, right? Like in that first half against Washington State, it's like what stood out? Isaac Jones can't post up because he's getting doubled, right? Jalen Wells is really the only dude that can go get one, maybe Miles Rice a little bit. But point is, Washington State wasn't like when they did swarm, it's not like they had dudes they were really getting into. You know, but Illinois, there are dudes everywhere. Yeah. Um, and like the someone just commented, um, in a pick 'em game, I always lean with the team that can get stops. I'm, I'm pretty sure like the number one offense versus the number one defense. I I think like the number one offense has like been is aren't they up like five four? I think I saw you comment on the tweet too that said that. Yeah, I think, I think they're five and four hard last hard. nine. Like offense pretty sure offense is in the lead, like five to four. Uh-huh. And and this season more than ever, like it's just an offense is like I, I just it's hard to put my head around like trusting Iowa State. Sure they can get stops, but if Illinois goes up just even a little bit, I mean they can kind of pull away in my opinion. Um we saw Iowa State lose at Baylor. And that was I mean, Baylor is probably the best Big Twelve offense, I'd say, metric wise at least. Um maybe not eye test, but at least metrics wise. And they did lose at Baylor. They were down like twenty in that game. Um so, I don't know. This game can go a lot of ways. If it comes on the defense late, like if it comes on the pressure, I kind of trust Iowa State a little bit more. But, yeah, I, I lean Illinois if I had a bet. It's a really tough game. That's why it's a pick em. Like that's This is the one true pick em game of the of the uh, the whole Sweet 16. It's the toughest game, you know, naturally as well. So, it makes sense why. You know, you can go 50-50 each way and have an argument each side. So, it's not directly relevant, but when Iowa State played Iowa, right, which I understand, like, was at Hilton and it's a rivalry game. Like Iowa's offense is like nationally elite. Like it's probably okay, top 15. Um, like I'm pulling up this game to show that to the people who think that Iowa State can only win this game if they lock up Illinois, I think that's completely wrong, right? Like I think there's a chance that Iowa State can win this game and score 80 points. Yeah. Because sure. if it's up and down, like and Illinois is not guarding, like Iowa State has shown games where they can get the ball in the cup a lot and play with some pace. And with Illinois, on the other hand, it's like, yeah, they've seen other good defenses, but have they seen a defense that plays like Iowa State? And like for Iowa State, it's like, oh, you've seen good offenses, but have you seen a team with five, six, six dudes? Or you know what I mean? Five dudes, six, six and up. A guy like Terrence Shannon and a guy like Domaski. It's like, no, you haven't. So that's why it's so hard to to like compare because we haven't really seen anything like it. And I brought this up about my logic about Texas A&M uh, when they played Houston of like, if Iowa State's going to be so – the fact that Illinois doesn't really have a point guard, right? I would say that's fair to say, right? They don't really have a point guard. That makes it – Illinois is so pro-oriented, pro-style oriented. It's like they don't – they can beat you so many different ways that like if something's getting stopped by Iowa State, they can try something else. And it's like, okay, let's try – Terrence Shannon without a ball screen. Let's try hitting mm-hmm. Coleman Hawkins on a slip every single time. Let's try Domask, you know, passing out of that double and swinging it. Like, there's there's so many things they can do, and they're so good offensively that, like, as long as, of course, the caveat is, like, Gary a and Hawkins and guys like that are going to need to hit threes. And, like, we've seen times where Terrence Shannon in a half-court game can kind of settle and is just kind of shooting too many threes. And even though his percentage is fine, like, I just don't love it. Like, I just don't think it's going to go in that much. I don't know. I think Illinois has a lot of counters. I've loved Iowa State. It's crazy that the Big 12 tournament and Big 10 champion are meeting at this stage. It's a crazy game, but, like, bottom line, I lean Illinois. Yeah, yeah. If I had bet it, I lean Illinois for sure. But, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Um, Just wanted to start on one of these comments. Like, I get that. Like, like there's a chance – if one of these teams wins by double digits, who would you say it would be? Yeah, I mean, the higher ceiling team is for sure Illinois. Like, there's no way about it. Mm-hmm. And I would say that Iowa State also has a lower floor, too. Like, I just think people, will, like, and I, like, a lot of, like, even, like, old heads, like, they're not used to, like, new school basketball where it's, like, offense can win you games now. It's not just all about defense. Like, you know, 
they also like defense winning championships. So when you get to the championship game, defense definitely matters. Like who can stop so late? But in a Sweet 16 game, like there's not as much pressure. You, you know, you can trust. You can you can you know rely on your offense more than defense, in my opinion. And like I said, like TSJ is a pro. He's the best player on the court. Domas also second best player on the court. Like when these guys want to try on defense, they're also a good defensive team, in my opinion. Um, they wouldn't have won this many games in a row if, if they weren't a good defensive team. So, yeah, I, I lean Illinois as well. That's a, that's a good point about like, like I kind of was getting at this, but like, yeah, Illinois has the pieces to defend well enough in this game, a hundred percent, and especially because the way like Illinois could get lost in a game where it's like. I mean, Purdue's a bad example because they score on everyone, but, like, on a game where there's just really good guards and, like, they're just not keeping guys in front, right? Or a team's just moving the ball really well and they're not connected enough. But Iowa State, the way they play, like, you have time to scout, right? It's like you know what they're doing with their with the Trey Kings, the Wards, the, the Jones as, like, passers, and you know what, you can, what you're can, what you willing to live with with a guy like Lipsy and Amam Chilovich. Like, I just think that there's ways they can be very prepared to defend. And another thing is when Terrence Shannon is getting downhill and, like, I think my guy Bobby said this of who benefited more from the block charge rule change than Terrence Shannon, right? But who's really protecting the rim for Iowa State? They, they like I understand Jones can and those guys are athletic and get blocked. Yeah. It's not like they have like a really great rim protect. That's the hardest part is getting there. Once you get there, you get score there. You know what I mean? So all right. What game do you guys want to talk about next? I saw some Marquette chatter. Um yeah, Austin. I I totally agree about Nick, I'll let you go first, but I'll just say right off the bat, I think Marquette's going to win this game by double digits. Yeah, I, my biggest like emphasis on this game was Kolick and Oso are so prolific in, in the pick and roll that, you know, as good as Burns isn't as good as he's been, and he could probably go for 20 rather easily in this game, I'd say. Um, you know, he uh, defensively, like, he is not in a good spot in this game. And I understand, um, like, when they made their ACC tournament run, like, yeah, they beat Duke, but – you know, Roach and Flip or Roach and Mitchell, like with McCain, like that's not a great pick and roll oriented team. Um, same thing with UNC, like RJ Davis and Baycott. Sure, they're good, but they're not as prolific as literally Kolick, who was slicing and dicing up Colorado if you watched it. Like it's a whole other ball game with this. And I think Marquette can just not really play off the court because the NCC is going to have to keep on the court. I think I have to ride DJ Burns. Like they brought him this far. So I just like, oh, well. We're taking it out of the game. I like, can't play tonight. Like <laughs> he's going to be out there. Um, it just is going to come down to um, an offensive fair game where just you know who can get stops. And I don't trust ACC to get stops. I trust Marquette a lot more. So yeah, I, I lean Marquette in this one. Um, I think this is the one game out of all the games out of the eight that this one can be a snoozer by halftime. I'll put it like that. Totally agree. To quickly respond to this point, like, like, okay, sure. Let's say Burns is out of the game, right? They are, yes, they will be better equipped to defend the prolific Kolik Oso pick and roll that Nick just mentioned, right? But that's that's the thing. It's like, how little is Kevin Keats willing to play DJ Burns in this game, right? And at the end of the day, when Burns is out, yeah, NC State's still a good team. Like, they made the Sweet 16. They're red hot. They DJ Horn, McConnell, uh, Marcel, Diara, who's been playing really well, and then Middlebrooks, that's a solid five guys, but we're talking about Marquette. Like Marquette, Marquette has been a far superior team all season long. And like as great as NC State's run has been, like just for quick context, you beat Louisville, you beat a Syracuse team that was never good, in my opinion. You beat a Duke team that just beat you at your place, right? And you beat a Carolina team that you had already seen twice and you were up double digits at half in their building. Okay. Then you play, I'm gonna skip Texas Tech for now because I'm gonna go into that game in a second, but you beat a 14 seed in overtime, as great as Oakland was, as unreal as Golki was, and as good of a player Townsend is. What's something that Nick mentioned this when you Nick, when you were talking about like Duke's pick and roll and Carolina's pick and roll, Oakland doesn't even run pick and roll. They're giving it to Townsend every time and running Golki off shit. So like you didn't even have DJ Burns in a big guard to pick and roll. Say that again. Townsend killed them too. Yeah, Townsend was nice. He went for 28. Like he yeah, Oakland, it's not you're not seeing the pick and roll. And then Texas Tech is a team you are seeing pick and roll, but but what are the details there that we're missing? One, Warren Washington's first game in forever. Two, the guards from you go from Tyler Kolick and Cam Jones from Pop Isaacs and Joe Toussaint, who saw two of 17 from deep, guys. Like it's a make or miss game. Yeah, forget the times. Like, yeah they've had a lot of three point variants. So 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 is Clemson, though. They've had a ton of lucky three point variants as well. 
But back to the Middlebrooks point is like he's not someone I would trust personally. Like not like if you're putting Middlebrooks just in for defense, like that's not smart in my opinion. Right? That burns it for offense. But like I think State's screwed either way, honestly. This it, is it, it would be team, straight up over Middlebrooks. Yeah. yeah. This is Swiss 16 is normally where like Cinderella sort of fits well. If not, Swiss 16, then like usually 99 out of 100 times in, in the Elite Eight, they do. So, like, that's another thing you just gotta be cautious of as well. Like, Marquette, extra time to prep. They have, like four or five days of prep for this game. Um, you know, that's that always, I always lean towards the better coach, which is for sure shock over Keats and the better team with more time to prep. So, take Digging into that more. a bit more. I think Kevin Keats has done a really good job scouting lately defensively. Like I just think NC State's had really good game plans. There is no game plan for Marquette because there's four shooters and and there's Kolik and Oso who have counters to everything. They've seen everything and they're dialed right now and they're on a mission. Okay. And then part two, I told you guys about the dreadful shooting from these two guards who I never believed in that much all season. So like I just wasn't surprised by this. I picked NC State to win the game. Like two for 17 is brutal okay but then here's the other thing dj burns had 16 points in 16 minutes part of the reason he only played 16 minutes is because of the foul trouble the other part is that he was getting cooked like like i don't know if people didn't watch this game that much because it was late or whatever or state pulled away but like burns was getting cooked he was a minus five in 16 minutes and he scored 16 points like that's crazy is it not to be that to be scoring putting the ball in the cup that much in the time on the floor and being a minus five means that they did whatever they want. And that was with these two guards missing shots. Okay. And with the with your rim rolling guy, not really healthy. So there's levels to this. Marquette is maybe maybe throw Gonzaga out there, the toughest pick and roll combo in offense, like everything playing off that in the country. This is probably my favorite play of the round. Um I'm definitely gonna play six and a half. You're in Nick. Yeah, yeah, no, I I didn't play anything on this game. I I What's hate I hate betting. Um, like like Cinderella to this point is the biggest. It's like such a 50-50 question. Like we know what Illinois is gonna bring. We know what Iowa State is gonna bring. Like, but NC State, I mean, the drop off could be like that. Like they could refer back to their old ways quickly off one like eight zero Marquette run, or we could see the NC State we've seen the past few games and they're just insane. So. That's always like the hardest thing to cap for me in, in Cinderella games this late, which is why I'm happy there's not a ton of like Cinderellas in this week 16 because these games are pretty much you know easier to cap because we know teams for ceilings, all that kind of stuff. Okay, but how about this? Do we think it's more do we think DJ Burns can be played off the floor on this game? Like it can be so yeah. bad defensively that he has to come out. Nah, I mean he'll still he'll still play like 25, 30 minutes. You but. think? Yeah, I just don't think like it, it's just like Keats. You have to ride him. Like you got to ride your guy at this point. It's just it is what it is. But Mark could I mean, be going by three. Like Mark Mark Kick Mark Kick could be getting wide open looks from three against if DJ burns the ball screen. No, like I they're shooting yeah, everywhere. It's, it's type of type of time that Middlebrooks comes in on because somehow it's where twenty one on Texas Tech. But <laughs> the game before that he had like one point. The game after that he had like two points. Like right. I guess it really just depends what he's out there doing on that on you know when they play. I don't know. Even when you bring Ben Gold in, like, I just love Marquette spacing. I, yeah, I think Ben Gold can spread the floor too. And if you get Burns on the perimeter, you know, see you later. Yeah. So I still haven't placed a bet yet, but I have every intention to, to back Marquette. Like, I don't know. Like, Cam Jones really? and Kolick is here, and Pop Isaacs and Joe Toussaint is here to me. And, like, at the, the end of the day, that was the only new guard that. they've seen. What'd you say? I just was looking at the line. I wasn't sure where it was at, but it's still six and a half. Oh. All right. Chat, you can tell us what, what game you want us to talk about next. I'll, I'll literally give it to the first person who says the game. Also, if you're here, please press like and subscribe. That'd be huge. Why not help the boys out? If no one says the next game, I might. No one wants the game? UConn. Nick, I'll let you start. What is it, 10 and a half right now? It opened at 8 and a half, right? Yeah, I think it's 10 and a half, 11 most places. Yeah, it's pretty much 11 everywhere offshore. Um, it says it opened up at 8 and a half, which I wasn't really paying attention. So I don't know if that's a true good number or not. But, yeah, I mean, 
it's the same old, same old, man, with, with UConn at this point. Um, I don't know. I truly don't think San Diego has any chance. I don't think they have any chance. Just just because of the pure fact, like, they're sub-300, three-point percent. Their best players got, you know, the best rip protector in, in the whole tournament left, pretty much in the whole country with playing it on them. Um, which completely can neutralize him, even though Lodi actually had, he's actually pretty respectable from three this season on, on on low volume, but I mean if you're loaded and dying by the D threes, you already you already screwed. So, I mean, <laughs> UConn's eight and zero last eight against the spread in the tournament. That's pretty much why this has gone seen. Like you just don't fade them. I think all sharp betters know that. All public betters know that. It's them or nothing. I mean, they routed Northwestern. They routed Stetson already. Hurley's using like this, you know, hard path they have is like a narrative that twists everything to get his guys up even more to play. Um, you know, I get the only like narrative San Diego State really has is it's a rematch. It's a rematch of last season's title game. And I get that. But, you know, at the same time, like I think Tremel, with D and Parrish maybe were the only three guys who like really played minutes in that game and Butler. Um just, just a bad matchup, man. I, I don't see how any way how UConn doesn't win by double digits unless they just beat themselves, unless they don't make threes. But you can't count on that. Um, do you have a response to this? Would you rather play first half in the full game? or? I don't think it matters. <laughs> I mean, there there's nothing that would, like, persuade me to bet first half over a full game. Um, I mean – like I, I watched their start versus UConn and Stats, and I mean, I mean they were on their P's and Q's, like they were ready to go. Scout was locked in, they were locked in, and a big lead just got bigger. So, um, yeah, <laughs> there's no, way, there's nothing I would to play me first half over full game. It's I like them both. Um, couple things from here, I agree um, with what you're saying. Um, thing I number one. Play. What do you like? You like that that's funny. That yeah. guy's. Um, I'm thinking one as good of a. Yeah, sure, I got you. Um, by the way, Carolina is also eight and zero in their last eight NCAA tournament games against the spread. Um, but yeah. I think San Diego State defensively, it's like when they played a team like Yale, it's like they just bullied them, like just physical, sliding their feet, whatever. I think San Diego State's defense. Will that translate as well to like the zone? Or I that's I I completely misspoke. I meant to the motion. UConn's motion, right? It's like you're chasing around and doing all this stuff. And I understand you can switch and whatever, but like it's the motion and it's clinging. That's what you need to worry about defending. Not can you just like pick up guys, right? Not can you just Lamont probably like be in your stance. Like it's not like Tristan Newton needs to score 15, 20 points to win this game. You know what I'm saying? Like UConn is just such a machine, churning things out with the motion, with the shooting. The spacing, the depth, clinging dunks, like it's just so hard. Like, and if Ladie's your biggest dude out there, is Lede, you really putting Ladie on clinging? Like, like I don't know. I guess on the other side, I'm thinking, I guess Caravan is guarding Ladie, and like, where is is clinging on J? Not like San Diego is a team that can really space you out and hit a bunch of shots. I know they shot well against Yale. They were due for that, and that was Yale, and they were all wide open. But like, it's hard to see San Diego State like shooting that well and also like I don't know just from even if Ladie is giving caravan buckets or whoever they put on him like that doesn't mean it's going to be anywhere near enough to to keep pace right yeah I I agree I agree with the um the bully ball point like I think San Jose predicates their defense being so good based off just them being able to like out physical you and you can't out physical UConn They'll be able to run their sets just like they did last year in the title game as well. Right. And it reminds me also of when UConn went to Kansas. Like, like that was one of the only games their offense didn't look good. And it's because Kansas had like a really good game plan about switching. Right. And like, and also UConn wasn't healthy that game. They were banged up. That was the worst they've looked all season. And to say that the worst a teams look all season was a four point loss at Allen is just absurd. Right. And like, to answer this in short, like, I don't think so, but it looks like we might be headed. We'll get to Purdue Gonzaga after this Bam UNC game, but like, it looks like we might be headed for this UConn Purdue matchup of these absolute machines that people just can't stop. And that's going to be awesome. Um, and I wonder what the line would be for that. But uh, 
Yeah, that's, at the end of the day, San Diego State upsetting this will be a way bigger upset than when they beat Bama last year. What was that line like? Seven and a half. When, what what game was it? When when San Diego State beat Alabama last year, as the one, number one overall seed. Yeah, I think it was like five and a half, six and a half, something like that. Yeah, it wasn't nearly as big. Um, I forget what I was going to say now. Damn. UConn Purdue. I was talking about. I brought in Purdue. Is oh that yeah, yeah, that that um, that's my favorite like prop bet. Exact is uh, UConn versus Purdue in the title games plus six hundred. I just feel like that's like what's going to happen, and there's no way really talking me out of that. So, Damn. just feels like the best two teams by far in the country. Yeah, no, that's that's nuts. I got my UConn future in, I think, at like plus 650, which feels like crazy right now. Maybe it's maybe a little better than that. Are you asking me to bark, Jacob? <laughs> Do you think he's coach of the year? I, I don't want to. We got to get into the next game, but. Who was that? I was. Oh, oh go. Okay, that's what he did. Okay. I'm not yeah. barking, but maybe. I, I He's a great choice. There's a lot of guys who, who kind of deserved it. Um, all right, let's get into Bam UNC. Nick, I think this is one of the first games where we're that I can remember where we're definitely on opposite sides. Because I have a feeling about Alabama. So talk me out of it. Nah, man, I've seen I've seen enough of Alabama. Like, you know, congrats on your your draw here. You face a Charleston team who wants to run a pace. You face a Grand Canyon team who hasn't played, you know, respectable offense all season. So we've had a favorable draw. Um Oh, it's just never made it past Sweet Six, Sweet Sixteen. I know Hubert is. Well, you just just mentioned it. He, he's also AT, ATS in the tournament. He's undefeated as a coach. Um, you know, I've I've seen Bama. I think they're easy to read, in my opinion. They profile as a favorite, uh, which is when you want to back them. Not as a dog, they're one and seven as a dog this season. Just not a good dog team. Um, much higher ceiling. Uh, for UNC, in my opinion, because they can actually play defense. They can actually play offense. They're a bit of a chameleon, in my opinion, of the fact that, you know, they can go up-tempo, they can go slow-tempo and execute in the half-court. Um, defensively, they can do both sides. Um, I, I I liked Alabama from the same point of, like, you know, they have a, good, a lot of good athletic bigs, uh, which is the case most most games, but I think Baycott's the best big on the court. I don't think that's a question. I think he can terrorize in the post, get a lot of their guys in foul trouble, but it's also key that he stays in the game and not get foul trouble. But – um. Being one of the best rebounders in the country, I, I, I trust him in that department. Um, usually Mark Sears is the best point guard in the, in the game, which, you know, in my opinion, he's not better than R.J. Davis. I don't think that's up for debate. Is there an so, argument for that? No, nah, I don't think there is. Mark Sears? I don't think there is. Um, I think R.J. Davis, I'd have to look at the shot volume, but if he got him up like Mark Sears and got more possessions and pace like that, I think that his stats would be even better. Um, Mark Sears you know, is shooting 44% from deep. Yeah, no, he can shoot. He can shoot for sure. Um, there's no denying that. But I just I, – I've, I've, I've seen what I need to see, bro. Like, every single game, like, Charleston came out punking Bama on the glass. He came out punking him, bro. Like, that's Charleston on the glass. Like, Bama does not rebound. They're the worst defense in the tournament left. Like, that's not a flip they can just switch. Like, all right, let's play defense against like, – take a day, guys. Like, they don't play good defense. They don't rebound well. Both things UNC will do. Um I like against Grand Canyon, bro. Like, <laughs> look at how many times they fouled these dudes, where they shot 15 more free throws. Like, you're lucky. Like, they missed 14 free throws. They missed 18 threes. Like, you y'all are lucky, bro. Like, congratulations on 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 the luck there. Like, that's the Grand Canyon team who's not even like that crazy. Like, Alabama is not good, bro. In my opinion, they just aren't. Like, they have the names, they have the talent. I agree. Like, I like Estrada. I like Sears. Kind of like Nelson, kind of like Pringle. I'm not even sure Wright's was playing. He wasn't at. He's playing. Um, He's playing. He wasn't at the shit today, though. He wasn't. Which, I could have sworn. Yeah, I think he's, really he's labeled. Well, it was. He's playing from Oats like two days ago, and then today, he said he's day to day with the doctor. So I don't really know. Um, I like him though. I think he does make a difference. Like when the news today broke, um, money came in on um, UNC. Um, I'm still seeing it like four and a half. It's, it's five on Bookmaker, which is sharp books. Four and a half juice on Bovada. Um, I, got, I I played them early at three and a half. 
it would have been a really big play for me if I had a below possession. I was hoping to come out flat three, but then saw three and a half money instantly started hitting them. So I was like, you know what? I just got to bet three and a half. I got to pull the trigger. You know, that number is not a fantastic number. Um, but I just, I just, I just like UNC a lot more, man. I just trust them a lot more. All right. Everything. I don't have a direct problem with anything you said. Can I just make my Bama pitch? Yeah, no doubt. So, well, first of all, shout out Mark Sears. 12 boards last game, and he defended his ass off. He was, like, switching. And, like, I remember there was Nate Oates in a press conference. It was, like, Mark Sears has to defend better. He said that a while ago. And, like, I get how bad their defense is. And I understand Grand Canyon couldn't make a free throw and they're spastic offensively and was doing random shit and couldn't hit a three. I get it. Um, I'm seeing a lot of positive buzz on right cell. I'm proceeding it, that he's playing. I, I agree that Baycott has an advantage in this game, okay? But here's the thing that I, I'm i not sure about, and it's not as bad as last year. It was bad last year, but I feel like they don't give it to Baycott enough down low. Like, I just don't – I don't know if they – do they play through him enough? That's one I of my – that, are they going to give it to him all the time? I think it's a bit of a luxury that they don't have to play through him, though. Like, you're not forcing it to him all the time. I know, but, like, Bama's got all these bigs that hack and, like, that big cut's older than and should be able to knock around. Like, I don't know. I feel like they need Carolina. Like, do you think Carolina's going to try to slow this game down or do you think they're going to win this game 100 to 85 that's, because they're that's, – That's why I like UNC. I think I think they're fine with either. I think they can go fast and they can go slow. I think they know when to do both. That's why I like them. Okay. Another thing about this. Something that – do you ever feel like if Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan don't shoot the three ball well, that they're not that hard to guard? Or, like, are you concerned about Nate Oates completely ditching Cadeau? Like, you know he's this – my friend Bobby made this point. Like, they are – he's such a math mind with this whole layups and three stuff. Like, do you think he could be, like, completely leave Elliot Cadeau or do something, like, funky defensively to, like, try to make things tough for RJ Davis, run him off the three-point line, and, like, he's got all these bigs to throw at – uh, Armando, like, those are a couple of different angles that I'm thinking about how they can slow down Carolina defensively. No. Anything no. defensively that revolves around Bama, you can't trust them to do. You just can't. Not, their numbers stink. They're the worst remember, defense left in the whole tournament, too. It's do you remember close. the Kobe White, Cam Johnson team that was a one seed? What happened? They lost 97 80 to Auburn. Auburn hit 17 threes. What year was this in? <laughs> I, mean, we, I know it's a different that's just a crazy data point. Okay, all right, all right. All right, right sorry. Just, it, about five it, years ago. Right. it was a straight up flashback. All right, here's my other random stat that you're gonna laugh at. In the Hubert Davis era, let's look how UNC did against SEC teams. They lost to Kentucky, they lost to Tennessee in year one. In year two, they lost to Alabama, and I know those four overtimes. And then this year they beat Tennessee at home. But they lost to Kentucky and they beat Arkansas. Arkansas is bad. So that's probably not even a point either. I'm just saying, I've said this a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. I'm sorry. It was just a flashback. It was just a flashback. It, it doesn't mean anything. Just sometimes it's vibes based flashback. I'm just saying, Carolina could be seeing a team that they haven't seen anything like. And I know they're flawed and I know they don't guard, but even on their bad streak, they still score the ball, man. Like they, this is that was their worst offensive performance I can remember. Like they can score the ball, and it all comes from getting. It all comes from their spacing. Of you've got your two guys shooting threes above the break, or you got your two guys in the corner, and you've got your ball screen, and everything is spread out. And like Baycott is gonna have to work. And I understand Baycott's been in college for forever. Like he's gotten better defensively. He can block shots now. Whatever. I just think it's gonna be hard for Baycott. Mark Sears is in such a rhythm, and and what's what's something Carolina struggle with like this Syracuse game stands out to me man like guards like JJ Starling and Judah Mintz like ate them on the like on the inside and gave you the free throw line and like I know that's another just random data point it feels like or like bro I can I pull know. up I can pull up how many games where Alabama got eight bro look at the end of the day I, Bama and their 400 points here too look at Alabama's last four games against high major teams You gotta remember, like Charleston and Grand Canyon are not high majors. 
not good. They got dominated in every single one of those games they took, and it, they went the OT of Arkansas, bro. And those are four high majors, and now you're getting UNC. <laughs> Can't you're right. You cannot trust Bama, bro. You cannot trust them. Unless they go nuclear from three, you cannot trust them. But that's the thing. I just think they are going to go new. And, I, and I'm just, okay, I can't say with any real logic that I just have a feeling they're going to shoot it well. It's more that I just think they're going to be able to get good looks, dude. Like, Mark Sears is just in such a rhythm right now. Like, they've got guards. Like, I just don't know if Carolina's, like really – Yeah, they're going to get good looks, but, but UNC will get better looks. Who has Carolina had to guard that was, like, that hard for them to guard? They're the 17th best offense in the country. As a whole, like as a collective unit, obviously you have a great point guard, great five, and everyone else is plugged into place. And I agree, like Alabama also has that. Yeah, Nick, you're being too reasonable. Know. Says, you're says trusting Alabama. the fact says that Alabama sucked at the All right, let me flip the script and say, Bama's going by 30. <laughs> then he's going to be like, wow, he's being reasonable for, for Bama now. Like, <laughs> that's. Bama fan, bro. Hey, we made our money on Bama, bro. Now it's time to fade them. We we, we both hit them game one versus Charleston, and then you faded them last game and you lost. I did lose. I should I almost faded them too. <laughs> I backed out. I was I was being a pussy, but honestly, that saved me that day. Because I would hurt, bro. They were up, one, bro. You gotta think Grand Canyon is stunk, bro. They were up one late. Yeah, but did Bama play That's very well? Like- that is crazy to me. Like Grand Canyon is stunk. But was that the wake up call they needed to ignite them to play good defense this round, or do you think they're just fully? Bama's incapable? defense is so bad they can't possible. flip the switch. Bama can't flip the switch defensively, bro. I've seen it. I don't I've know. Can they though? I've seen it. I've seen it. Was the last time Bama's won three in a row, February. Hater. That's that's, that's invalid though. <laughs> it's March now, man. Dang, in the locker room talking about like, hey man, we gotta win three, we gotta win another one in a row. When was the last time we did that? Dude, why does AM AM's one of just a quick sidetrack? AM's just one of the weirdest teams. Remember that year they just missed the tournament? Like, why do they just have to go on five game losing streaks? Like, they just do weird shit, man. AM's the wildest team in the country. Like, because <laughs> yeah. unlike the inconsistency, consistency metric, they're all the way to, at the bottom of the inconsistency. Right. So is Bama, though. They're inconsistent too. Do okay. Any is there any reasoning to my point of the fact that outside of just shooting numbers, that just Bama just their floor spacing and their ability to get to the rim could be a problem for Carolina? Like, are you not scared by that at all? Like, are you? I feel like you're thinking a lot about Bama's defense and just like, okay, Bama's Bama's bad. Look at their recent games. Like, you can't trust them defensively. I get all that. You're right. But I'm viewing this from an angle as like, who says Carolina can guard Bama? And Bama has been good out of the SEC. Like I, they they played a gauntlet of a schedule and like I understand it looks like they weren't good but like they were right there at Creighton they were right there be, beating Purdue like Arizona kind of blew them out I don't know fuck man like I know I gotta get off this but I just have a few, I think I know I thought Grand Canyon should have win two guys I just something's telling me that Bam was just gonna cook I think the only one I'm scared of getting to the rim consistently is scoring Estrada bigger guard Davison Cadeau. Shrada could hurt, but I mean, Grant Nelson has been. He's had three points the last two games. I'm not scared of him. Yeah, he's Pringle. Pringle. Pringle's fucking. Hey, I like Nick Pringle. What's your problem? I like with him too, but he's a bone. But he's a bonehead. Like we're. Yeah. Oh, I might have lost. Are you there? Guys, do we lose Nick or is this on my is this my problem? Hello? All right, you're back. Can you hear me? Hello? Yo, are you back, Nick? Nick, are you there? Yo. I hear you. you- Bro, do you hear that thunder? No. <laughs> that shit was crazy. I think it fucked with your Wi-Fi. I called I called it right. I called Pringle Bonehead and then, then the thunder just went nuts yeah. off. It. It's karma, bro. All right. Dude, I, I think call nobody I can't call nobody else boneheads no more. <laughs> you literally go Nick Pringle's a bonehead. You're thinking 
<laughs> Bro, that was loud. That was it sounded like a building like just collapsed. It was, that was that was loud thunder. <laughs> I didn't hear that. At all. all right, that's nuts. It, okay, we're back. All right, you're you're back. You're back. All right, we don't need to talk about this game anymore. You, I I understand. Okay, good. Um, I understand. I gotta be stopping so fast. When I put a chat up, I should let it sit there. Um, I, bro, I get it, dude. The this guy is such a Bama homer that I can't trust anything that he says. I gotta, I gotta take like a Pringle over now because if I don't, he's gonna kill me now. It's gonna have like twenty and twenty on me. I don't know. Just last pitch, like I believe in a team's ability to turn up the defense in March that hasn't really done it. And I know that might be stupid and wishful thinking, but like I just saw enough against Grand Canyon that I just have a weird feeling that they can 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 guard well enough. Two See, is, and no. I I kind of agree with that to an extent. I don't know. I just think their defense is just like I just don't think they have. The, I don't know. You don't think they have the dudes for it, but like, but they do have rim protection. Like they just have a stable of bigs, dude. And I know. You have Bonehead Pringle, you got Stevenson, you got Walters, you got Debuta, who like Loki won them but that game crash over the like, They just got so many dudes. You know how like there's a lot of like good low major guys who aren't the most athletic, but they know how to like use their body and position to get blocks. I feel like Alabama is the opposite way. I feel like yes, they have that rim protection, that yes, they're athletic, but they're just dumb about how they go about it. And that's why they foul. 26 times in a game and they they have a high foul rate all the time they're just not like i heard i heard your thunder right there that was like nothing that might be like one seven <laughs> the last one like that shit was crazy we got a number right. of games real yeah. quick dude it's right. it's this caleb love goes. not caleb williams my friend that's a that's a, that's a <laughs> <laughs> yo th- that's another point though like at the end of the day I don't like handicap games off this, but it does feel like destiny, and I would love this if we got Caleb Love versus UNC, man. What about the fact that the the Carolina game is second? Like, if Arizona wins, you know, are they going to be a little bit, like, too eager? Or the flip side, if Clemson wins, are they going to be like, oh, we got Clemson in the bat? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there a little psychological element of who – who wins that comes in Arizona game? I do, I do think there is like a little pregame locker room, like, oh, like if we win, we get Caleb next, or oh, we don't. But then once you are out there, it's kind of just like you forget about that kind of stuff. But no, at pregame locker room, like, yeah, no doubt. That's for sure a good talking point. Should we do Duke Houston or Purdue Gonzaga? Duke Houston's a bit more that's a good one to talk about because I'm kind of like persuaded on that one either way. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm wearing my Houston sweatshirt. Do you want me to sell you, or do you have anything you want to lead with? Do, do you like Houston? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do too. I think at the end of the day, I'll make it quick. Like, all talking points aside, at the end of the day, you got to trust Houston's dogs, and they're old. They're veterans, man. Better coach for sure. Um, yeah, Houston's just like the definition of top, tough. Duke's pretty soft. Young guys. Riding like the ultimate high, like oh, we just crushed a JMU. We couldn't, like McCain couldn't miss. We were hooping versus a defense who was horrible. And now you're playing a great defense, locked in. I love what uh, Sheed had to say after the game of Reggie Cheney and everything. Like this team, like really believes they're the most cohesive team in the country. They got dogs. Um, at first, when I first looked at the number, I was like, man, do I really want to lay four with them versus Duke? Like I could kind of see Duke hanging around, but the more I thought about it, it just like the more I could see Houston separating than, than Duke like actually pulling this one out off. Is Houston gonna own them on the glass? I think so for sure. I mean beside I mean at the same if Flip gets in any foul trouble, which you know Houston games do become scrappy. So like you're gonna have to factor that in. Like Flip or Mitchell get in foul trouble. They have no one off the bench, you know, oh, Ryan Young, but woo, you know, no one's scared of Ryan Young out there, not in this game. So, I yeah, I think Houston could punk them on the grill, on the glass for sure. Let's talk about this A and M game. Like, I wrote in my write up for why A and M was going to cover, like, why they're a good matchup for Houston, right? Whether it's their ability to crash the offensive glass, whether it's the ability to have guards that you can just kind of let go downhill, and like, dude, look at this. Shoot. I I understand Wade Taylor's doing a little bit of chucking, but like, dude, these three guards, Obasiki, Radford, Taylor. 
what can they do? I wrote this. You can get downhill one-on-one because you're athletic. And those guys are older too, right? Because you're athletic and you have a really good handle and you're going to crash and you might get the offensive rebound. Like the, the AM, like we talked about how wild and inconsistent they are, but like it was a perfect type of matchup for Houston because of Houston's, you know, being thin in the front court. And that being thin in the front court came up to, to bite them. Francis look, at how, look how bad they out rebounded them. Yeah, Duke, dude. Duke will not even sniff that. And AM almost won the turnover battle. Mm-hmm. And they still lost. And almost everybody fouled out for Houston. They still lost. Right. Like Francis, not only did he foul out, he barely played because he was in foul trouble, right? And like Roberts was six weeks on the field, but like I think Houston's bigs are going to be able to score effectively in this game. I think they're going to be able to offensive rebound effectively. And in theory, Filipowski is the pressure release of of the blitz, right? Of the ball screen blitz. Like you can you can slip it to Filipowski and he can make plays. We've seen Filipowski be totally agree. We've seen Filipowski be a really good passer. Okay, it, like I was at the Wake Duke game and Duke was when they were blitzing. It's Filipowski picked him apart. But, like, Houston is so much better at defense than Wake. It's not even funny. And, like, here's the thing about Duke's guards. One, I agree about just Houston having tougher, older guards. Like, like, bro, Tyrese Proctor, Jeremy Roach, and, and, and McCain, it's like, you're fantastic about teams that you can just out-talent, like these two teams, right? But if you have to give me what guards I would rather have against a defense like Houston's, an elite defense, like, this is a game where Tyrese Proctor shrinks, right? Tyrese Proctor will elevate against the James Madison. Like McCain can shoot the cover of the ball. I get it. Um, but like, is Jared McCain, are we that scared of him breaking you down off the bounce and getting to the cup? He Like give me, if you had to pick three guards that I think could beat Jamal Shedd in a one-on-one game. And I was picking between the three A&M guards and the three Duke guards. I'm taking all three A&M guards over the three Duke guards. They're just younger and they're not as tough and they're not as good as getting downhill. So I think Phil, if Filipowski can ball out on the short roll and McCain sitting threes and, and Proctor and those guys are hitting threes and they're holding their own the glass, that's Duke's path to victory. There's no way that Duke's guards go off in this game. I just don't see it. Like it just it just does not suit them well to deal with this Houston pressure, to deal with this veteran team. This is a young team. And who knocked them out of the tournament last year? Tennessee, a physical older team that locked their dumb asses up when they were rolling. They were rolling. And then they, they they met an older physical team and they got their dumb asses locked up. And that's when they had Derek Lively and Whitehead still. Okay? Mm-hmm. Like, like this is where you don't have Caleb Foster. Like, you got these three young guards that, like, are very talented. And there's certain matchups where they can do that. This is the worst type of matchup for Duke. This is a nightmare matchup for Duke's offense. I think this is where their offense hits a screeching halt. I think Houston can win this game, like, 68-54. to 54. Like, I, I'm very confident in Houston. No, I agree 100. Like, like, like I said, if the line wasn't four, I would have already played them at three. I still, like, I put in my right up there. Like, I, I, I might, like, live bet them, but I, I'm leaning towards more now playing the pregame number. Um, just based off everything you said, and and a big game like this, I feel like flip. You know, he is the difference maker, but I kind of feel like he could like float away in this game. I just, I don't trust him in this game. I mean, they're gonna have uh, Jawan Roberts on him, who's you know, well, I Roberts should be on. Him. I think Francis should guard Mitchell, but they could flip that. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Um, I mean, they could flip that pretty easily, though. It doesn't really matter. But I mean, I do like Roberts a little bit more defensively. Um, but yeah, I I mean, even if McCain, you know, if he, I think he's the one who can get hot and 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 make shots for them. Even if he goes for like twenty, I still don't see an outlet where they win, honestly. Yeah, McCain could get hot because he is the guy on the other side of the action, right? If Roach and Proctor, or I guess Roach mostly, are, are, is in the ball screen action. But, like, and let me just go back to the point you made about Alabama. You're like, oh, who cares? They just beat two low majors. Duke just beat two low majors. And I understand yeah. I fell for the JMU stuff, too. But, like, they were not playing well. They Carolina owned them, okay? And then you lost to State, and I get State's red hot. But, like, are we really? Do we learn that much about Duke from these two games? Right. I truly, the games Madison, your budget is a zillion dollars more. I truly don't think Duke's like Duke's biggest games this season. They haven't showed up to. You know, you scroll up the camp off at home versus Arizona. First big game of the year. This, this counts. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's, good. that's a good arc. So that for sure counts. Yeah, that's your first this big road game. You lose your first big home game. You lose. ACC tournament game, you lose. When you would see at, at home rematch, you lose. 
It's a sign of a team that's not tough. They're soft, which I agree with the public narrative. They're soft. You can call me crazy because even though they've had five days for this game, for this game to prep and everything, they might still be hungover off that JMU one. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Interesting. Well, they they came out to play against James Madison. Like you could tell right away that we it were. It was dead. both ways. Duke came yeah. to play. JMU stunk. They were hungover from Wisconsin. They were drinking Hennessy the night before, partying. They looked horrible. <laughs> I put money. I put money on them. But to be fair, they did make me money the first time, so I can't be that mad. But they were horrible, horrible. It doesn't help when your best player is two fouls in the first minute thirty of the game. Yeah, I digress though. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I I think we have this one nailed. I just it really boils down to me of the angles of success are uh, offensively are McCain being on the on the weak side and knocking down catch and shoot threes, which of course he can do. And Philip Pikowski making plays out of the short roll, which of course he can do as well. But Philip is also going to be in hell on the glass and on, and on defense the whole time, right? Like, who says he's going to bring his A game offensively? Like, it's just man, man against boys. Yeah. Like, we saw them score 52 points against Tennessee last year, and I understand it was a different team, but to me, it's a similar theme of Duke is a team that we've seen look really good. Are they the sixth best team in the country? I really don't think they are. Like, I really just don't think they're that good. Yeah, no, I I like Duke more than you know most. Well, now now that now that through the Jamie game, I think public are pretty high on Duke. I think all of these teams are better than Duke, dude. Like, is that is that just my bias? Like, I think all those teams are better than Duke. I think there are a lot of teams better than Duke, um, but I still respect Duke a lot. Like, I still like their team and stuff. Um, I just think the moment right now is too big for them, and I just trust Samson way more than um, Shire. And I trust Houston guards, veteran. Like, this is like their all. This is it for them pretty much. Because um, I think it's Criers and Sheds last year. Pretty yes. sure. Pretty sure both of them was last year. Maybe COVID stuff, but they're both seniors. Sometimes there's just more than – sometimes it's just more than basketball. And I know you can't handy that, handicap that kind of stuff, but I get that feel with this Houston team. Wait, Miley Wilson's a senior? I thought I'm oh, so he's young. old, bro. He's old. He used to be a tech. I thought he's he was old. young. Nah, he is old. That's crazy that I completely – I think Roberts – this might be his last year too. He's it been is. there for what feels like forever. Yeah. All right. Um, Is Nick's video good for you guys, by the way? He's been a little laggy on my end. So let me know. I might be better. Around. Say something, Nick. Hello. Yeah, you're on like a two-second lag on my end. It's, I hear you fine. But all right, let's do Purdue Gonzaga and then get out of here. Maybe run – maybe just like a quick opinion on the others. But – Purdue Gonzaga is one that I spent a lot of time thinking about. I mentioned this when you're talking about Marquette. Other than Marquette's pick and roll game, the way the offense is flowing, I think Gonzaga's offense looks like the next prettiest out of that pick and roll right now. Like Nemhard is in total control. We know what EK can do, but Ben Gregg, Hickman, and Anton Watson off that pick and roll action, I think have been fantastic. And then it once again brings a point, but like against who? Because was McNeese really ever all that good as we wanted them to be? And Kansas was a mess, and that's was a total mess in that second half, right? But I don't know, man. We we saw Gonzaga play against Purdue like in the pre Ben Greg era before Nemhard really felt like it had he had the keys, right? It still felt like Hickman kind of wanted to be a point guard a little bit. I don't know. I feel like Hickman's uh, really settled in alongside Nemhard. He's been shooting the ball better, and. I just like what Ben Grigg brings to the table. I don't know if they're going to get anything out of their bench. So, like, Purdue's so much deeper, and Edie is Edie. So, I don't really know how you can feel good about backing Gonzaga. But, like, I also feel like Gonzaga is really going to be able to score. And, like, you give Mark Few Mark – Few, how, what knocks Mark Few out of the tournament? Let's just look back. Like, what, do you, what does it take to knock Mark Few out of the tournament? National champion UConn, year before. Arkansas. Oh, I forgot about that game. That was JD Note was my boy. Um, you lose the ship to Baylor. Um, canceled was well, this Texas Tech, right? You lost to Texas Tech number one defense year before FSU team that was the athletes. I don't know. Point is, you got to really bring your 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 best stuff if you're gonna knock Gonzaga out of the tournament. Like they don't just they don't just roll over. Like I I think they're gonna be able to defend Purdue better than they should be able to defend Purdue. Like, I just don't think they're going to – like, I don't think this is going to be like EK has got two fouls, like, immediately, and they're just, like, cooked throwing Braden Huff out there. Like, I just don't see it going that way. I just trust Mark Few. And 
I don't know. We've seen Purdue in like games. Remember when they were at Illinois and Illinois was was in control, and then Purdue just got some stops, and then they got to that point where you just there was nothing you could do to slow them down. It kind of feels like that to me, right? It's like Gonzaga could be up at half and they're cooking, but then it reached a point where Purdue's digging in and getting some stops, and there's just, there's nothing you can do to stop them. One one question I will ask: Who's the better point guard, Braden Smith or Ryan Nemhart? I don't know. It's pretty debatable. I say Braden Smith's more solid, game to game basis. Easier job. I watched what Nemhard did against St. Mary's in the WCC tournament. I was really turned off by it. Yeah, that is St. Mary's. Though. That is the St. Mary's team we're seeing for the third time. My handicap is easy on this one. To my opinion, um, Gonzaga's best strength is their offense, and Purdue has a better offense. Um, Purdue's beat them by double digits the last two times they've played, and uh, I don't know what Gonzaga can do differently. I don't know what they can do differently. Score more. But so, 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 yeah, I agree. Like, when Gonzaga has better offense and you let them play in transition, you let them get out and, and, and run their sets and be great, they're good. But Purdue at the end of the day has a better offense. I just I, I, I really think you need bodies for, for Edie. And and I, I will say this like Gonzaga with without Graham in, they've they've looked good too. Like they it's not like he's you know do or die out there. But like if he goes out with two fouls, which I mean you kinda have to cap that because Edie draws the most fouls in the country. Um you know, I don't trust the other uh, anyone else to really guard him out there at all either. Um, and, and you see, like, in the first game, they shot 32 threes versus Purdue. That's the most threes they took all season, man. Like, they just – like, they have to adjust their game. Their game plan is not like what it normally is versus Purdue because of Zach Eady. It's just tough, man. I just don't know what – I don't know what can change from the first two meetings where they lost by 10-plus. Eady still – Eady missed eight shots in Maui. It's kind of a lot for him, bro. In my opinion, and this let me let me talk about this real quick. Uh-huh. In my opinion, Edie did not play the great that game. He missed shots. Bro, Graham, bro, pull up pull up EK real quick. Now look at look at EK's three pointers, bro. Look at that. <laughs> he shot six threes that game, bro. He's wide ass open. And he made two. Since then, bro, since that game, he's made one three. <laughs> That's my point, though. Like, Gonzaga is changing their game because of Purdue. Purdue is not changing their game because of Gonzaga. You're instantly, like, at a disadvantage when you, when you have to go away from your tactics, when you're playing out of your comfortability. EK is not comfortable out there on the three-point line. That's why three-point percent is garbage. Like, in Are my opinion – they just can't. They just it just sucks. Like I mean, you saw Utah State, bro. Like they they got the shit kicked out. They didn't know what to do. It's just at the end of the day, if unless Purdue beats themselves, you can't do anything about it. And I saw someone comment like Panthers gonna get out coached. It's always in a big spot. That's what I'm saying. Like unless Purdue beats themselves, there's not much you can do about it. Do you think Gonzaga can get Purdue to like okay? When you say Purdue beats themselves, is that what? It's the guards it's are just, turning over or they're just missing every three? Are those the two ways? I think if they beat themselves, it's because Edie's not efficient in the post. And if when he kicks it out off the doubles, because they're going to inevitably get wide open threes, that's why they're the best three-point shooting team in the country, percent-wise, is because they're wide freaking open. Right. Like, if they're just not making those threes and they're not going in, then they, you know, they they they're, they can lose this game. But, it's I mean, they're such good looks. You can't count on that. And they're forty percent for three. Like, I do agree though. I think the over. I think the over. I wrote about this. This is my favorite over of um, the Sweet Sixteen. Why is it uh, so low? Why isn't it higher? I think it's kind of. I think it. Well, Purdue. Purdue like plays really slow because I'm not saying Edie's slow or anything, but they play slower because of him, and they love sets like they yeah. love using that shot clock. And they sit. Oh yeah. So what I talked about, I can't remember what I talked. Oh yeah. So what I talked about in my write up was 
Purdue doesn't play defense for a long time, and Gonzaga wants to go fast. So Gonzaga plays defense for a long time, like average possession length, and Purdue takes a while on offense. So it's like both strengths go at, go at with what they're comfortable with, which sets up an over, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it was one of those. Gonzaga was a different that's just like my opinion on it. Gonzaga was a different team when they last played. Like, I don't think there's ever an answer for Edie, and like, I don't think Gonzaga is going to force a bunch of turnovers. But I don't know. I feel like Edie's catches were a little farther away from the basket. Like, Purdue is such a machine that it's like, how often are you going to be as a defense? Like, I don't care how good Braden Smith and Lance Jones are, or Fudge the Lawyer for that matter. Like. If any of those dudes are taking anything off the bounce or anything that's decently contested, I consider that a win because ED is literally unstoppable and off that ED action, they get wide open threes. So if it's anything other than an ED foul or shot or a wide open three, I consider that a good defensive possession. Like I just think Mark Few, I don't know. Is it possible for EK to not get in foul trouble and just be out there and and, and ED's just maybe – Edie's goes off, but like that he's not getting fouled. I don't know. I I think I'm not gonna back in Zaga, but I definitely think they can. I definitely think they can win. But fuck, Purdue's a machine right now. It's like how can you really go against them at this small a number? Yeah, Purdue what, five and a half. Yeah, the line is sticking up there, and that's why I haven't played Purdue or anything. Um, we produced thirteen and zero their last thirteen non-con games. They've just been a machine, man. I just like I'd love to give Gonzaga like a fighter chance. I just can't really, I can't really make a case for him. Like Purdue's better than every single team they played this year. The only games they lost, they lost two overtime games. They lost the Ohio State freaky Debler game, and you lost when Nebraska couldn't miss a shot. Yeah, they lost three true road games in the Big Ten. And that's where, like, the scout is the best because they've seen you so many times. Like, that's nothing out of the ordinary. But, like, non-con game-wise, they've been nails. They've been great. Yeah. Defense All right. I guess I guess let's just do Creighton, Tennessee, and then dip. That's the last one, right? Mm-hmm. I guess we didn't – Arizona, Clemson. If you want to do that real quick. Oh, do you have anything sure. to say about that? I'm not touching that game. I definitely think, you know, bad Arizona or bad Clemson could show up, and it's – but uh, if good, both teams show up, I still think Arizona is a way better team, right? Yeah. If what you said again, if bad Arizona shows up, I mean, if bad Arizona shows up and Clemson wins this game, I won't be surprised at all. Oh no, but, they but. they bro, they go as they go as Caleb Buff goes. He was hot in the first half for Dane. They were up seventeen, looked amazing. He was ice cool in the second half. Dane cut the three. Just Colin like Boswell was ass though too. Horrible. He had zero. He had a donut. He had a donut until free throws at the very end of the game. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. What do you think this about game, the, is Balo on Shifflin and Keyshot on PJ? Yep. If at first I was like, wow, Balo's gonna guard PJ, tough assignment. I was like, no way. Keyshot's like for sure gonna guard him because of his mobility. Right. And that's that's like that's is gonna be that's gonna be a tough assignment. For PJ, all like because I Keisha is really good defensively. Even with all of Caleb Love's craziness, don't we think Arizona still has a way better backcourt than Clemson? Like, for is Chase sure. Hunter just? I know you think Chase Hunter is going to go over his points prop, but like, do you actually think good Chase Hunter is going to show up again? I think that that is more so just like I think PJ Hall is going to get canceled out. I think Gerard, you never really know what you're going to get. So I looked for someone who has a fair matchup offensively and he's been in a stride. I will say this Clemson has been lucky. Look at the three point variance. Baylor, New Mexico are like nine for forty seven combined from three. That's really the only reason why they're here. New Mexico couldn't guard him though. They couldn't hit shit. That's why it was a twenty one point game instead of a, a ten point New loss. Mexico, like, New Mexico quit pretty early. That's the type of team they are though. They're a front runner. The shots aren't going down early by the guards. Those were like, man. And Jalen House looked like he needed to go see, like, uh, angry management doctor or whatever you call him, bro. He was out there losing his mind. I saw him, like, squirting a Gatorade bottle at the ground, like, half the bottle. Like, that was a bad look. 
Yeah, no, that that was no fun for us New Mexico backers. Um, all right, last one, Creighton, Tennessee. I like Creighton here. Um, I'm not it's not comfortable, but I think part of it is I one of the things I love with this show is um defensively, Iowa State, their identity is they want to turn you over, they want to swarm the ball, right? Creighton forces tough shots. And I think this is the type of game where Connect has to carry Tennessee. Like, because I think that this is a game where if you're trying to if you if you're making Ziegler and Vescovy into like you know, coming or off the screen and having to score over the top of Calcbrenner, like hell no. And if you're kicking out to Josiah Jordan James to shoot threes, I'm fine with that. And then I don't see how Jonas Adu or Awaka scores. Like, I don't see how they put the ball in the hoop unless maybe they're crashing the offensive glass, but like I don't know. I feel like this is a game where it's all on connect. See, I kind of thought this. So I stayed up late and watched the whole Oregon game. Uh huh. They were letting Oregon do whatever the hell they wanted. And Oregon was gassed with 10 minutes of the second half. Kuzma would dribble the ball past half court. He sit on the right side of the court. He would literally just dribble the ball for 20 seconds. Zero pressure. It was, I thought I was coaching my practice. Um, by uh, what's his name? What's Crane's head coach name? McDermott. But yeah, I, I thought I was coaching my practice by McDermott. Not to apply any pressure at all. Like they were gassed. They were just chilling with the ball past half court. Kuznar pick and roll or Kuznar would drive. It was literally him and Dante scored every single bucket in the whole second half, bro. And they went to OT until someone else finally scored for Oregon. Like, how does that happen, bro? Like well, Dante is- Dante could power through Kalkbrenner in a way that Tennessee that Dante's a unique player that could that could overpower like- Kalkbrenner and Cuisinart Cuisinart had forty the other night and and was eating up the drop. He's the type of dynamic guard that can eat up the drop. I don't think Tennessee has a guard that can eat up the drop. And Connect is most comfortable as an ISO score. And like Shireman, like Connect can get his on anyone, but like Shireman going to go off this game. Connect Connect should have thirty this game. He should. Is that enough? That's enough. That's enough. Do you think it all comes down Creighton for how they're shooting offensively? Like, do you think? Do you think the that's Tennessee always the case with Creighton? No. It's always the case with Creighton. No, but I'm saying, like, do you think Alexander and Ashworth are going to be like bothered? Like, do you think they're going to be turning it over? I wouldn't say they turn it over, but that's I what Tennessee trust, wants to do. I trust one of the. I trust the third best defense in the country. Okay, but look at this. Who's the seventh best at guarding the three point line in the SEC, and who relies on ter- forcing turnovers? But but against but a point, that doesn't turn it over. Three point defense is hard to measure because it is a lot of luck. If Crane goes off from three, then we can say yeah, Tennessee's not got a bad defense three. But if Tennessee guards them well, then you can draw a conclusion that they're good for guard for three. It's, I get that. Like there is a, there's a lot of luck though involved in guarding the three point line. There is to an extent, but like. There's a reason why Houston and Mississippi State and San Diego State and Boise State and Virginia that's, and Auburn are up there. Right. That's that's a, like those all those things are just physically overwhelming you. That's and not Tennessee really what Tennessee was up does. There. Just, I mean, Tennessee was up there and is 29. Not what they do, in my opinion. SEC play. There's so many teams that run and gun in two threes, I guess. I just really think Tennessee's like they got the worst game. Out of the way, like they played. Did, whole didn't Creighton? Practice. Didn't Creighton? No. And... No, they kind of did, dude. They had two guys they couldn't touch. Tennessee yeah. has one guy they might not be able to touch. Okay, that's that. That's not that's Creighton's fault. They were not guarding them well, bro. Culpepper. Okay, first, second off. Colbert has Colbert has played two NCAA games this this season, and he's been abused in both. I mean, it's been pathetic, bro. It's been pathetic. We gotta talk about that for a second. <laughs> Look at what Dante did to that man. He babied him. Look at what low major Enrique Freeman did to that man. He babied him. What the fuck? Colbert is defense player of the year. Where's he been? That's all I'm saying. Did and Enrique like Freeman baby him? He babied him, bro. Twenty one on him. Fourteen boards on him. 21 14 on defense player of the year. Look at Dante Sass. Dante Sass were grown man, the baby food. All right, wait, 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 wait. Okay. It was crazy. 
I get this whole Oregon two man show thing. I was watching that game and was like, Creighton's so going to lose. Lost, this game. Right now, like, they had no gas, nothing. No, and I know. could have won it at. Don't they could have won at the free throw line, bro? And he missed it. I think Oregon should have won that game. I'm on no the same page. Dante, Dante did with everyone on Calc Brenner. And here's the thing: what does Creighton do? Every single game, every single possession, and it's the reason that they're last in turnover percentage. It's the reason they're number one in, in. Uh, a lot of fouls that game. You know, I know, and I'm saying Oregon was a really bad matchup for them because they had a post because they could run their pick and bro, roll. Oregon had two dudes. That's what I'm two. saying. That's, oh, that's bro. Listen, two no, dudes two against the Creighton pick and roll drop coverage. What do they do? They stay home on three point shooters. They chase you over the top and they make you shoot over the top of Calc Brenner. And guess what? Kuznar made those shots over Kalkbrenner, or he would pass to Dante, and Dante would go through Kalkbrenner. That's the only reason it was those two dudes because they never needed to use anyone else because those two dudes were so. That's effective. what. That's what. And Tennessee Nect can't do. do that. Tennessee can't. That's what Neck's gonna do. Neck is better than Kuznar. That's what he's gonna do. Bro. He's gonna go for thirty. But is that his game to like be in the pick that and roll every he single score, time? He score anywhere on the court, bro. He's an NBA player. Yeah, that's true. That's why the court by far. That's true, but when he's dishing it to Jonas. That's not in Folly Dante. I don't mind. Okay, so I know Jonas is not going to do what in Folly Dante did. Like what he did was impressive, but there there's still ways for Jonas to score on this man, Kalkbrenner. Bro, Kuznar still missed 14 twos. Because Kuznar's not that good, bro. <laughs> He's not that good. I know. The defense dude. was laughable. Go watch the game. I watched the whole. I watched the whole. I game. watched. I watched it too. I was frustrated. I was but what did they start to do? Shocked. For the first time shocked. ever, I've ever seen with Creighton, they threw Kalkbrenner at the ball and doubled, it, and they forced two turnovers off it. They never switch up the defensive coverage, and they did because they just couldn't stop Dante, and they couldn't stop Kuzner. I just don't think Tennessee is going to be able to make them frant- make them look that bad defensively. I think Crane was pretty lucky to win their last game. Agreed. I think Tennessee, as bad as they played versus Texas, they were still in control of the game the whole time, and there's never doubt in my mind. I was like, okay, Tennessee is about to lose this game. That's true. I think that they just have, like, a bit more to them, like a bit more like we can get over the hump. I I don't – I just – I trust Tennessee more than Crane. I can make like X's and O's. There's a lot to this game. Like I, I do think Crane will get quality shots, but quality or not quality, you know, their three point. It's just their three point variance is just. I mean, that's the risk you take in this game. I think but, that's a good bet. I think I think connect like I love Shireman. I think he can do a good job on him, but connect is kind of matchup proof, and he shoots so many shots that I think that's a good bet. He's a whole <laughs> different case study because Texas has. How many five star athletes they can throw at him, bro? How like a ton? They have a ton of dudes of length. Crane. How many shots did they miss? Desu missed a lot of open shots. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about offensively. I'm talking like defensively to shut down neck. Like okay. they had a ton of dudes who could like actually bother him. Crane has literally won. And I don't even know if I would trust him to play defense on him. And do you even want Bay like at the end of the day, bro? Baylor's about to exert so much energy defensively. I don't know if that bodes well for him offensively. That's a good point. I do think Baylor will play well though. I like Baylor. I like I like him. I know you're high on Baylor. I'm high on him as well. They, like and him. also, what is what's the thing with him? He's a great defensive rebounder, and if he's chasing connect everywhere, he can't rebound. I'm telling you, Neck is like the piece to it all, and I I just truly think like as and as bad as he played last game, it was. Not only just him, but it was a lot of what Texas was able to do. And I don't think Crane could do that. Jason Green, I respect him, but he ain't doing nothing out there. He you don't think do Jason Green's going to lock up connect? Jason Green ain't doing nothing out there. Respectfully, Dude. I like Jason Green. He ain't doing nothing out I'm not going to call him a bonehead because then my power will go out. <laughs> but he ain't doing nothing out there, bro. You Jason don't think Green's Jason Green – I don't know. I think Jason Green could lock up connect. He did play great against UConn, bro. That crane, that crane game versus UConn was the most bizarre game I've ever seen in my life. Right? That was truly a one of a one of a season game by them. Unbelievable. You know, it's, you, you dude, when Miller, 
when Mer- Miller, Farabello, and Jason Green go six for nine on threes. What like yeah, that man. is crazy, bro. If they do that, yes, yeah, so they'll be Tennessee, they'll be Purdue, they'll be anybody in the country. Yeah. Like when they're doing that, they're 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 hooping. It's just like you can't expect that. How many games this year have you seen Connect just like be inefficient? Like he was just inefficient. Oh, the Texas game was horrible. Forcing, he stunk. He couldn't make a shot. I haven't watched like every single one of his games, so I don't. I can't answer that. Like a lot of Tennessee, I've bo- I had the box score. Um, but I th- this game, like, I just I just know when NBA guy has a plus matchup, he's going to show up, and this just feels like next time to shine. This game, I think if they if he has like thirty and they lose, then I just like tip my cap to Crane. It is what it is. But doesn't that kind of remind you of a? What about this game? Like we've just seen games where it's that, just him. That was um, I had Kentucky that game. I bet Kentucky that game. They had, they I had just won the SEC regular season championship. It, wait, but listen. Even though I was on Kentucky two here, and even though Connect was cooking. Here's why I didn't care. And tell me you felt this watching this game. You're watching him cook, and it's like Kentucky's offense is way easier. It's just I coming do. way easier. And that's what I feel like this game could be. It's like, yes, Connect's cooking. He's hitting tough shots, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, like, that's all they have. And, like, I think that there's a chance that they could get sucked into that thing where if Creighton's playing well and, like, and if Creighton's scoring, where they get sucked in and Connect goes, give me the ball. I'm going to do it every time. And I, and I can offense, live with that if I'm back in Creighton. Kentucky's offense is a fraction better than Creighton's. Is that sarca- are you being sarcastic? Or are you are you- no no no? The metrics back that up. Look at the, look at the numbers. Kentucky's okay. offense is a bit better than Tennessee or than uh, Creighton's. Sure. And sure. and it's how they're set up with athleticism, like the guys. I mean, Reed Shepard went seven for ten for three that game. I know. I'm just more trying to sell you on. Is there an idea that when we turn this game on, that Tennessee is taking tough shots or that no one outside of Connect gets going? To me, the answer is yes. I think there's a, a high. There's that's a, always, high that's that that is always a possibility though with them. This sure. Is this and is I think Creighton. We Creighton, lost you last year. Right, but I I think Creighton's going to be able to get good shots. Like I just think I think Creighton's. Fuck, man. But you know what's going to happen? Steven Ashford's going to go two for ten from deep. I can't. He's so frustrating. I don't, bro, just watching that Oregon game. Like, I just can't get the, that game in my head. Even their offense, bro. We like, have to. Boring. It's March. We have to. Survive in advance. It's over. They don't have to deal with – they don't have to see Dante anymore. He's done. They, they should have lost. They should have lost. Straight Tennessee up, they should go out there and play that – they should go out there and play that fucking zone, bro. I mean, Creighton was – it was, bro, I don't know how they won that game. Thank God Oregon's dumb because Oregon – like, they knew a three was coming. They were five seconds on the shot clock. They would lose a three-point guy somehow, and they would splash it. It's just – bro, Oregon was – ugh. I feel bad for Dan Allman. Yeah. I they just they didn't have enough cats. I agree Creighton should have lost that game. That doesn't mean they can't turn up the Jets and play up to Tennessee, though. Why is this line not bigger? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I just – Creighton – Why is this line I'm, not bigger? Well, what do you want? To, what, <laughs> what would you want to? What would you think it would be? Ken Palm has it at two. The I market is actually showing this matchup a little bit of love. The market actually likes Tennessee. It's a, it's it's two and a half. Like I just considering but that, I feel like a lot more people think Tennessee like can win the two. two. Torvik has it minus one point six. See the market, the market. So like the number is kind of like showing Tennessee love in a way. And I would expect it to because Tennessee is the team that's been like a legit title favorite. Like I feel like no one ever was able to really get behind Creighton as like a legit. Title know, there are some hard Creighton like fans out there, bro. Not fans, but like people who are like think this seems amazing. There's a guy I know on Twitter that will argue Crane to like his grave. And he argued them last year too. Their grave as well. What guy? Uh, Matt Peralt. I like him, but he loves Crane, bro. Oh, is like, that the, the, is that the, the Juice guy? 
I know it's a different guy. I don't know what show he he like does something. With, I don't know. He's a cool dude. He just like loves Crane, bro. <laughs> loves him. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, I, hey, I, I, I go ahead. One last thing. I'm just bringing this up just because I'm I'm just curious about this. Okay. I mean, I was just looking. I was looking at. Oh, that was this year. Whoops. Nah, forget it. What were you gonna say? Well, I was just talking about the San Diego State loss last year, but that's not really relevant. I don't think Tennessee is on that level defensively. I understand their third in camp pump. To me, they're just like. Am I wrong? Like, is there a chance that Creighton just that Creighton that I my read is wrong that Creighton's gonna be able to run their offense and get good looks from deep? Like, also, who says that I do can guard Calcburner one on one? They don't. You know, that's my biggest thing with Creighton is like I would like them to use him more. I feel like they use him when they can get the ball to him. I feel like sometimes they just can't get the ball to him. But like games where they get the ball to him, he's fucking money. He's really efficient. It's just his volume is. A little low, in my opinion. Like, I remember this Marquette game really pissed me off. They couldn't get him the ball. What happened the next time against Marquette? Oh, Marquette didn't have any of their guys. I don't know, man. Creighton should have lost this round. There's no doubt in my mind. Same with Alabama. And I know that these those are the two games we're disagreeing on, and I'm not even saying I'm going to bet both those dogs. Now, nah, Alabama, should never, they should never have lost to Grand Canyon, yeah. Like I watched that game and they were they were like they would have lost his because themselves. The crane shit was just different. Like Oregon just if you bet hey, if you bet Oregon plus five and a half, you got fucked. I feel bad for you. Yeah. Cause they bro, you knew it was coming. So my so my friends talked me into betting this game and I liked Crane. But I was like, you know what? Last game of the night, I'm gonna throw like just like you know, like a hundred bucks on it, like whatever. I bet Oregon, and I, I literally am so against cashing out. Like, I hate cashing out. I'm a big advocate. Don't do it. <laughs> as soon as I get with the OT, I'm like, nah. Uh, yeah. I got to get out of this shit. They gave me $2 profit. I'm like, just give me the 2 bucks, or I'll go buy a lollipop. <laughs> like, I got out of it. I cannot even believe it made it to two over- overtimes. But then, of course, when I made it to two overtimes, I mean, Crane went on like 11 over on. Bro, crazy. how did they not throw Cario Quendo out there? Like, like he Dude, put – like, is he bro, that bad? Oregon, bro, Oregon, I couldn't even tell you. Like, the Mookie, their five-star dude, yep, he, yep. he looked like he couldn't even dribble or catch the ball out there. No, Mookie didn't play. What are you talking about? No, what's know. his name? Uh, uh, Dude, we are? No, Evan? what's his KJ Evans. Kwame. Yeah, it was Kwame. Shell Sad looked horrible. He looked horrible. Jesus Christ. Man. If Shell Sad looked horrible. They looked horrible. Rigsby bro, looked part- horrible. This is why Zakai Ziegler is not going to do anything. Like this just feels like a game where Tennessee is is joined in double digits by one dude not named Connect. Like I think if Creighton scores, I think if Creighton plays well offensively, they win. I think the only way Tennessee wins this game is if they disrupt defensively. I'm just really confident in Creighton's ability defensively. Like I said at the beginning, their thing is they force tough shots. Like Tennessee is never like Tennessee is about the system. If they can play a team like Kentucky where Ziegler can get the paint every time and kick it out to shooters that are wide open, they can hit shots. But we've seen time and time again with Vescovy, Jordan James, and Ziegler that they go ice cold against a good defense, it feels like. And I don't know. I just feel like even if Connect is cooking, he's going to take tough shots. And we've seen so many games where he just misses a lot of shots. And I don't think Adu I, I and Awaka can score on Kalkbrenner. And are they going to crash the offensive glass? Maybe. Are they going to turn Creighton over? I don't think so. I just think it's too hard to turn Creighton over. They're, I don't know. As a Tennessee backer, I hope um, they get three point positive regression from that last game all at once. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Because they were they were they were three for twenty five last game, twelve percent. They still want some out. They That's you know who they do are. That's who Vesk can be. Like this is such a fraud, bro. You know. Um, I saw a tweet that was like teams who shot that poorly. It was like forty-seven percent for two, twelve or fifteen percent below three. Some of the free throw lines, some shit. Teams in the NCAA tournament were, were zero and forty-six at that point. Tennessee was the first one to ever win. They broke. The, they broke the curse. They were one of forty-six. 
Has the team ever know, lost man. getting 30 burgers from two players like like Oregon? I guess it went double overtime, so it takes away. It did go double, yeah, yeah. All right. I think that's going to do it for today. Nick, great to hop back on with you. If anyone if anyone rode this whole thing out, appreciate you. Hopefully you learned so much. Like that's Hey, that's what's good about it. me and Nick aren't, aren't backing down. Like we're, you know, it, it's cool to see varying perspectives. And, uh, you know, I respect every point that Nick makes, right? Like, like it's not just arguing over whether something's true or not. It's like we, we're really getting at like different angles. I don't know. I yeah, don't know everyone. That was, that was everyone, that's what everyone handicaps pro games. Like no one wins all the time. Everyone loses. Like we all have our own angles to cap, man. And that's what makes it fun. Like talking games, it's never an argument. It's just like we're just varying angles, comparing angles, and that's what makes it great. Yeah, that was awesome. Again, if you if you're still here, uh, drop a like, drop a subscribe. Enjoy the games. We might hop back on Saturday morning to talk about the Elite Eight games. Um, yeah, good luck to everyone. And yeah, if not ahead. the Elite Eight, for sure we can do Final Four and Championship. Yeah, so absolutely. there's that to look forward to as well. All right. Have a good night, everyone, and uh, best of luck if you're capping uh, the Sweet 16. Peace. Peace.